Welcome to Paradise in the Pines, a podcast about the people, places, and stories that make this the home of American golf. Brought to you by the Pinehurst, Southern Pines, Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And welcome to Paradise in the Pines. We're joined today by Jack Nance, the Executive Director of the Carolinas Golf Association. Jack, welcome to Paradise in the Pines. Thank you. You got a wonderful setup here. Oh, thanks. We appreciate it. Thanks for being here. And we're in our sweet spot. We can talk about golf, uh, home of American <laughs> golf. Uh, you've been with the CGA since 1984. The organization has been in existence since 1909. You became executive director in 1991. Tell us about your time with the Carolinas Golf Association. How much golf has changed since, uh, gosh, 1991 when you became executive director? Yeah, exactly. Um, I had the luxury of getting to know the CGA growing up playing mm. junior golf, and our executive director at the time was Hale Van Hoy, and he had followed a guy named Clyde Mangum, who was deputy commissioner of the PGA Tour rules, and Clyde followed PGA Boatwright. Okay. So unbelievable history we had yeah. here, so I'm honored to have followed those greats over the years. But uh, during my teens, I was playing junior golf and uh, uh, amateur golf after I got to be 18 and got to know the CGA, and there was an opening. My roommate actually – at the time, was working with them and said, we got an opening, you want to give it a shot? And lo and behold, I got the job. And then good things happened, timing, and yeah. such that I was able to become executive director in 1992. And I was just uh, uh, reminiscing, in, in 2009, we did our centennial video. Mm -hmm. And in the video, I'm getting interviewed, and I mention and brag about how we're up to 159 tournaments <laughs> from 50. Right. You know, Five, 10 years before, we're now over 350 Wow! in a year and 12 years. Now, this is not just North Carolina. This is South Carolina, North too. North and South, yeah. yeah, I want to make that clear. Uh, we, we're the only multi-state golf association in the country. Some of them have Northern Cal, Southern Cal. Mm. They actually split up states. Met in New York is New York City. So uh, we um, oversee both states yeah. and uh, just the way things started. I think if we were all born today and started fresh, we'd probably just be a state Golf Association yeah. across the board for everybody. But th those numbers give you an example of how we've grown and changed. And I, I would like to take credit for all that. But, no, it's <laughs> it's, it's just you kind of put the wind in the sails yeah. and let it take care of itself. And, of course, the Carolinas, people are so envious of us down here. Of and course. all we have. Yeah. 350 events. I mean, there's only 365 days in a year. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, that is a ton of events. That takes a lot of staff, uh, a lot of management, a lot of logistics. How hard is it? What is a challenge to stage 350 golf events per year? You know, I've often wondered how in the world we might skip a tournament or we forget right. about one. But the great thing is if we have 100 people playing the tournament, that's 100 people reminding us yeah. that tournament's coming up. Entries come in and we take care of it, but we got a great staff. But if you keep doing this year after year, you, you, as I tell folks, they say, oh, you do a great job. Well, I hope we do because we do the same thing year yeah. after year. We might go to different places and different events, but it is a cycle routine. You don't want to get into a funk, so to speak, and always mm -hmm. you want to improve on things. But overall, those tournaments, uh, you can imagine when school gets out from, say, May to August is when we're really on right. all cylinders. Mm -hmm. Seniors are playing, women are playing, the kids are playing out of school. That's when we're the busiest. And then early in the year, it builds up. Later in the year, it kind of wanes back right. down. So it's a lot of golf. And, and and how many golf courses are there in both Carolinas? So you, you try to move things around a little bit. Right. Uh, so everybody kind of gets a slice of the pie, right? Yeah. Uh, there are probably, oh, maybe – 900 golfers in the uh, golf courses in the Carolinas. Probably in our association, we have about 650, mm -hmm. not all of them. And that includes the par threes uh, and, and driving ranges with some of the courses. So the problem we've run into is it's kind of ironic. COVID really helped us mm. and the golfing community get people out to play. Yeah. So this year and last year, when we started calling the courses, hey, can we book this event or we can book that event? They said, we're just really busy. I don't yeah. think we can take you this year. So while the game has grown, it's actually affected us getting courses as easy mm. as we used to get. We were able to land them all, but we have to be mindful that those courses are filling their tee times now. 2008, 2010, you remember that. We were talking about yeah. what's going to happen to the game. And mm -hmm. now look. And yeah. again, I think it's all due to COVID. I mean, hope I would like to tell people that we did a great job growing the game, but 
COVID helped quite a bit. And I think from a tourism standpoint, from from my seat uh, as president and CEO of the CVB, uh, it, it has been a huge impact on the golf industry. Um, you know, we were one of the first ones that put together a social distancing and golf video. I look at that video now and I'm like, how ridiculous does that look? But I mean, that that's the age we were living in with COVID. Uh, and, you know, Piners Resort being here as well. I mean, they're having an all-time record year and now they're 126th year and Kelly Miller over at Pine Needles and renovation of Southern Pines Golf Club. Right. And uh, obviously being a great destination, uh, it, it has certainly helped in many ways. Uh, talk about the mission of the CGA. You put a lot of tournaments, but you're a nonprofit. Uh, so what is the, the mission of the CGA? We're a service organization, 501c3, uh, nonprofit for golf co courses or basically golf clubs in the Carolinas. And we try and um, assist them, service them, and their golfers. And the way we do that, our two primary areas that we work with is handicapping. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you play golf, a lot of people like to get a handicap and see how they're doing or not doing. And the other big area is our championships and tournament program. While we run 35 championships in North, South, and the Carolinas, we also have a wonderful grassroots program for juniors and adults called our one-day program, yeah. where we go to a course, maybe on a Monday or Tuesday, we're able to get really nice courses at that time. The people find a way to get off work because they want to go play that course, and we're able to write a nice check to the club when they probably wouldn't get quite the revenue they would on a Monday mm -hmm. or Tuesday uh, as well. So that in itself is, um, has been really nice. It, there are other other associations across the country that focus more on championships, kind yeah. of like the USGA does. Mm -hmm. But I'm really proud of our grassroots program, and I got to tell you, the one day program is the last time, uh, the first uh, time I saw it on any of our books was 1933. We're mm -hmm. running one days then, and, and yeah. Phil, you got to imagine that at the time, the number twos and the pine needles and the Sedgefields, they were all easily giving up their courses because golf was so much newer and we were able to get yeah. these one day events and they're paying like three or five dollars <laughs> i mean literally four yeah. or five yeah. dollars to play and they're going to play these wonderful courses so the the result was i want to join the cga yeah. because i want to go play these courses and it worked out great and to this day our one day program is really great because it's a handicap event for the yeah. most part Gross and there's golfers. usually a waiting list. Um, there, yep, exactly. And there's a gross division, too. Yeah. And we have four balls and singles. Uh, we're, we're, we started a women's four ball program about five years ago, and it's just gone out the roof. And again, we travel to wonderful places, and it's very, it might be 60 or 70 bucks a head to go play. How can you join the CGA? Um, the CGA basically are clubs of the members. So if you join a club and get a handicap card, that is your golden okay. ticket, so to speak. Now, Aside from the, the green grass facilities that you read about and see, uh, the USJ several years ago allowed e-clubs to come on board. So the e-clubs were where people can sign up online mm -hmm. and not necessarily go through a green grass club, although we very much promote the green grass clubs. They're our members. But as golf should be, we're opening it up to other people who the younger group especially loves e-clubs online, yeah. get their handicap. You know, you've got the Gen app mm -hmm. and all this where you can now post your score, keep up with stats. And there's GPS too. GPS, exactly. Yeah. So the basic answer to your question is once you get that Gen Handy card, cap card at one of our CGA facilities or e-clubs, that's your ticket to get into the Carolinas Golf Association. You talked about playing golf as a kid, and you ended up playing golf at Wake Forest, one of the most renowned programs in the country. Who did, when you went to school yeah. at Wake Forest, uh, who did you go to school with, play with, uh, and how did that mold you into uh, the, the golf profession you are today? It was, it was uh, just a, a sweet time at Wake Forest to be yeah. around a lot of folks. Dot Hoke, Gary Holberg, mm. Robert Wren, those fellas were older than me but played on the tour later. And I tell people the best lesson I ever got at Wake Forest, the best education was what I was not going to be doing for a living. <laughs> right. And it was playing professional golf because <laughs> you got guys like Holberg and, you know, he got to be 45 and he just, he wasn't hanging up, staying up with the younger guys. And he mm -hmm. played the Champions Tour, came along. Robert Wren had a good nine-year run on tour. And, of course, Scott Hoke yeah. has done fantastic. But it really opened the door. And Coach Haddock, Jesse Haddock was our coach. He was very good to me, and I had the opportunity, not really knowing what my life had ahead of me, yeah. Coach Haddock offered me to come in and help him for the next year and a half, and I would like to say it was an assistant coach job, but I got paid like $6,000 <laughs> and a little bit of gas money, and my parents were still helping me a little bit, mm. 
But that time really helped me learn a lot more about golf. And, of course, Coach yeah. Haddock, the Wake Forest brand, all helped me uh, get into the business. And, it, again, my roommate, David Norman, offered me the opportunity to come interview, and I got that job, and here we are today. So that those early years of I talked about playing junior golf and getting yeah. to know the CGA and then playing amateur golf at Wake Forest and meeting so many people, it just helped me tremendously to this day. Any, all of us that were in golf are running into people that we haven't seen 20, 30 years because it all circles back. Got to ask you, I mean, you're Wake Forest. Did you run into the King? Did you have any kind of stories with yeah, about the King? I got a picture with him, and we used to have a pro-am there. And um, the King, a, a funny story, I have a twin brother. And while we were on the team, they were having this pro-am come in. And all the greats that you would know of, Jay Haas, Curtis Strange, mm. Arnold Palmer, Eddie Pierce, you know, it goes on and on. Vinny, uh, not Vinny, um, uh, a few, Leonard Thompson, all these greats coming in. So what Coach Haddock said, all right, we're going to caddy for these guys, and we're going to draw a lottery here, and that's who you're going to get. So my brother picked Arnold Palmer. <laughs> that's great. And I had Jack Lewis, which, if you remember Jack, just a wonderful golfer, beautiful golf swing, uh, wonderful guy, and he made Walker Cup, mm -hmm. played on tour for a while, but just didn't connect with the tour part. And he's still playing uh, and teaching here in the Carolinas. Uh, so it, my brother had a great day with Arnie. And I, I'd always remember Bill saying that uh, when he would say, Mr. Palmer, what do you want? He'd say, huh? Huh? He couldn't hear very well. So Bill had to <laughs> really learn about on the back nine to speak up or get close to his ear because one ear was better than the other. Because right. the whole front nine, he was saying, huh? Huh? <laughs> So anyway, it was great memories. He got a great picture with him, and uh, uh, that that was a, a, a wonderful moment. And to this day, we we were able to connect a lot with the Wake Forest. As a matter yeah. of fact, the golf coach now, Jerry Haas, was my little brother in the Kappa Sig fraternity. Oh, there you go. When I was a senior, and he was a freshman, and it just so happens we both ended up near each other yeah. and in the golf business. So kind of like my example, we really ended up uh, – connecting later on in life what a great tradition in golf history of wake forest yeah. and it lives on today uh, uh webb simpson uh has a home at ccnc yep. and, and will zalatoris i mean the guy is finished in the top six at the masters the last two years and i saw him recently at the masters the guy must weigh 140 pounds <laughs> i mean but he can pound the ball yeah. and has got a great short game and you know i, I think he you know he seems destined for great things yeah it's wonderful to see that you get older guys like billy andrade um, Lynn Matisse was there, and they're now Champions Tour guys. Mm -hmm. Billy, as a matter of fact, was on the 1986 NCAA championship team. Um, when Chris Kite played, uh, Tim Straub, Lynn Matisse, uh, Billy Andrade, and one other I'm forgetting about. Um, t uh, can't remember his name right now. But anyway, they have not won a championship since 1986. And, uh, you know, it's just the way golf has surface this a lot more uh a lot more competition parody, better programs yeah for competition sure competition and parity and stuff out there so anyway so so as we all know it's a great sport yeah wonderful um listen i had a, a picture of paul simpson on the screen there and uh i just want to refer to him i mean you talk about one of the most accomplished amateur players in the cga in the state of north carolina the carolinas right paul simpson um talk about him the guy is just a machine uh, <laughs> He's just, and one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. He really is. He, he's got the gift. He's just born with it, and he certainly took advantage of that. And he won't mind me saying this, but, you know, he gets that straw hat out there, and he's got <laughs> a little bit of a belly on him. And uh, he would be, I've always thought, would have been the best gambler out there if he yeah. just shows up at a club in a straw hat. <laughs> he's going to play for a few He's thousands. an assassin. Yeah, he's an assassin, <laughs> but it is phenomenal. He's now seven years old. And uh, huh. he's won practically every eligible event of ours that he can win. He's in his 43rd or fourth win of CGA championships mm -hmm. over the years. And in defense of guys like Larry Boswell, who's second, D Dale Morey's second, a guy named Larry Boswell's third, and they're both, when well, Mr. Morey's passed away, Larry's still around in Greensboro. But those guys have won about half of what Paul's won and mm. just, and, and fantastic golfers. But we did add a North Carolina super senior, a Carolina yeah. super senior, when those guys didn't have it back in the day. Mm -hmm. So now that they're considered majors, Paul even has more to choose from, <laughs> and he just keeps winning. Yeah. And uh, he's a wonderful guy, pr loves the game, and you're right. He's, I've traveled a few times with him, and i got to tell you, I have never seen the guy upset. Yeah. Never. 
I mean, never. And he holds it in, but mm-hmm. he's a very much of a gentleman on the golf course, and he let, lets his clubs do the talking. But he's a wonderful yeah. guy. got a wonderful family, his wife Chris and son Philip, some grandkids now. But uh, he's been a great supporter of ours. Uh, you know, one year Paul won the British Senior Am, the Canadian Senior Am, and the U.S. Senior Am in the same year. Wow. In the same year. And he, he's still going. Modern day Bobby Jones. He really, yeah. Yeah. He, he very, you know, he played professional for a while. He roomed with Bruce Slitsky mm. back in the day. And uh, don't know what happened. You know, timing's everything. Yeah. He certainly got the talent. It just didn't click for him. He ended up with a wonderful job owning an insurance company. Gave him a lot of time to play. And he's yeah. still delving into that and uh, just enjoying life. I tell you what, I met him as a news reporter. This had to be late 80s. Right. Played an event at Brick Landing. Won it. Um, it was a brutally hot day, and we wanted to interview him afterward, and I'm just a one-man band by right. myself from WNCT in Greenville, North Carolina, and, and said, hey, can we talk to you on camera? And he said, you know what? You mind if I go back to the condo and take a shower and put on a fresh shirt and why don't you come join me and uh, uh, just hang out in the condo while right. I take a shower? And I was like, okay. So, you know, he goes, does his thing, comes back out. I was like, hey, you want something? Just, you know, just being a gentleman yeah. and just uh, – there with his family introduced me to his wife and uh you know, we had a great conversation did a great interview and uh he's just you know such a great guy yeah, and is. well deserving of his induction into the carolina's golf yeah. hall of fame uh in fact your location uh just talk about your location yeah. their headquarters uh here in southern pines right across the street from pine needles uh and the hall of history that you have there which is so impressive i tell anybody that comes yeah. to the area it, it is it is a secret gem, but it was yeah. so cool to walk through that. Yeah, we need to do a better job of promoting that. And uh, but I will tell you a little bit about it. We moved from Clemens, North Carolina, and we're showing some of the yeah, video of it. Right? Here. Yeah, we moved from Clemens, North Carolina, where our office was in 1991, down to Pinehurst, actually Moore County. We were in West End, mm. Seven Lakes, for 23 years. Yeah. So we outgrew that, and then eight years ago. We had planned well ahead of that. Said we're going to build something. We looked at so many different pieces of land in Moore County, but we landed at Pine Needles right across, not Midland Road across, but right across the parking lot street. There's called yeah. Ridge Road, and we built there in 2007. And our phase two of the project was to create a hall of history because I love history and our, and that's what makes golf so great. I mean, yeah. you look at number two, Pine Needles. It's all about the history mm-hmm. and then making more history. And that's why people have to keep giving back and being a part because we're going to be history one day. And uh, so anyway, it's located at 140 Ridge Road right across from Pine Needles. And our second phase, we raised money and created what's the Zan Law, named after a guy named Alexander Law. Mm-hmm. Um, and we uh, rallied around him, made, uh, raised some money, and we've created this wonderful Hall of History, who has artifacts in there of all kinds of beginning of golf in South Carolina, all the way up to our USGA championships, to our majors. We had a trophy case. And uh, the latest thing we had put in there was the USGA came down and put in a, a, a display of Christy Kerr's driver that she won when she played in the U.S. Uh, Women's Open a few years ago. And we also have a Mickey Wright kind of uh, box, or I call it a jewelry case, you know, with a covered glass. Yeah. And we have a lot of celebration. So those two items were put in specifically for the Women's Open. So we're inviting people during the Women's Open, to, during our working hours, to come on over to the office because you're right there on the property. I mean, And it's free and open to the public. Free and open to the public, and we want to showcase that. And then we have a volunteer, Larry McGuane, who's been very helpful for us. But as you know, we had, I say, I say, you know, we had four of the eight Curtis Cup girls Mm -hmm. were from the Carolinas this past year. Yeah. Four of the eight. And that's remarkable. So we made a a display in their behalf. They sent us their jackets, hair ribbons. Oh, wow. Very cool. The ball that Rachel Keene secured the matches is in our presence. And she won the the North South. Won uh, the North and South. And uh, wonderful lady, her mom, Brenda was a Curtis Cup lady. She was a Wake Forest lady, too. So we really collected some neat things. And, again, it is all free. Just ask you to come up the front door and sign in, and we'll show you around. And and you can kind of narrate, look at the narrations and the um, uh, text and just read all about it. It's really a nice nice thing. And, of course, got my inspiration a little bit from the Tufts Archives and what mm-hmm. they do. Yeah. And uh, But – we wanted to celebrate golf in the Carolinas. So there's so many things about Jay Haas and Arnold Palmer, mm-hmm. all the connections 
of golf. So it's a really a neat place. There, we invite y'all to come. It, it is very cool. I highly recommend it. You, you guys did a great job with that Thank Hall you. of History. And uh, uh, anytime, it's open any working hours, yep. Monday through Friday. Yep, so that's uh, it. Yeah, you mentioned the USGA in uh, September 9, 2020, in the midst of a pandemic, they announced, you know, they're going to build a second headquarters, uh, Golf House Pinehurst Museum, Greengrass section, uh, everything that's going to go along with that relocation um, uh, anchor site for the U.S. Open. How much does that impact uh, the Carolinas Golf Association? It, it opened up the floodgates for tourism, I'll tell you that. Um, you know, not just the pandemic, but uh, the USGA, when they made that announcement, our phones rang off the hook, and it... it not that it put Pinehurst on the map, but it legitimized us as the home of American oh, golf. No question about it. And, you know, for us, it didn't change our daily plans or anything. What it does help with is our communication mm. with them now. They're, well, they've already had the office above the uh, Village, the Village Jelly, yeah. And so I've gotten to know all those folks up there, and we connect. But since they've moved and are going to move and made that announcement and all these events like the women's open are coming this year, the adaptive open at number yeah. six, we helped them work with them quite a bit. And it's, it's made an impact from us communicating better with them and just becoming closer to them physically. Uh, of, of And then perhaps in the museum world, the hall of history world, we have a staff agronomist as well, Bill Anderson. So we've been in the agronomy field a long time. So all those components are only going to help each yeah. other maybe each, we got some really nice artifacts that aren't even displayed. So, you know, we've already talked to them about sharing artifacts and going back and forth and then promoting each other. Mm -hmm. So all that has helped, but our day-to-day -day stuff hasn't changed. We're still doing the qualifiers for them and yeah. all those uh, handicapping and rules of golf, everything that we've been doing. And you will have a part in the Women's Open. Women's Open will be a Pine Needles June 2nd through the 5th. I encourage you to buy tickets because uh, at uswomensopen.com, uh, uh, they just have ground pass tickets, from what I understand, from the USGA. So their tickets are selling very well. Annika's going to be back. But what role does the CGA play with the U.S. Women's Open this year? Yeah, we um, when they bring events to the Carolinas, uh, we're always there to help because while we're not – physically or, or financially associated in any way with the USGA. We're kind of like a chapter to them, but yeah. not. We, we're, that's about as close as we, we can We act like one. So whenever, uh, as all associations across the country do, when they come to our area, we help them. For example, the areas that really benefit them is when they're trying to accrue a lot of volunteers. Mm. Now, this is a wonderful yeah. place, Moore County, as oh, you yeah. well know, Absolutely. to get volunteers. So we send our blast of 170,000 emails out to all of our members and hit this link and sign up. I think we did it, and they got, I don't know, 280 in a day. Wow. Because our members love golf. Yeah. And even if you're not from here, you know, it goes to Charleston and Aiken, mm -hmm. all yeah. of our members. But you might have a friend who lives up here or a relative and say, I think I'll go up there for the week and I'll stay with my buddy yeah. and I'll help the, the golf uh, tournament. Uh, and we, we do that for the adaptive and this as well. Also on a staff level, Rusty Harder and Maggie Watts are probably going to do rules of golf with us. I'm kind of a swing mm -hmm. person. I told them I'd kind of help in any way. Th they got plenty of rules, people. So I said, just let somebody else do that for now. But we're keeping up with statistics and other things that are kind of little uh, niches that yeah. they need for volunteers. So we get some of our board members and our staff to help with that. So we're very much involved, but you know, we have our day jobs going on as well. Yeah. Right. With all of our tournaments. Yeah. So we have to, we can't just <laughs> shut down for a week. Right. We cannot shut down for a week. So we just kind of balance it. We want to help the USJ, but we got to keep our, our gig going for all of our members. And we'll do the same thing for the adaptive which is really going to be an interesting, yeah, that's going to be cool. interesting thing for the USGA. It really Everybody's is. starting new. Yeah. And there's things that they probably still haven't thought about that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, not that they're not putting time into it. You know, with you get a first-time tournament with wheelchairs or disabilities and hearing or vision and all that stuff that you got to just take into effect. Uh, you got to think differently than your normal other 13 or 14 championships right. that you have. But that is great deal for Pinehurst, great for number six, Absolutely. great for the USGA. Uh, so, and we've got it for two years, right? Yeah, for yeah, two, two years. And uh, then the U.S. Open comes back in 24. Then the right. double U.S. Opens, the Women's Open, Men's Open, yeah. and Pinehurst number two in 29. Then when Men's Open again in 35, 41, 47. Uh, I told Tom Pasha, I've got that committed to memory. Yes, yeah, so you should. I know the years. I should. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, obviously we're the home of American golf, and you're a member of Pinehurst. Right. Um, 
obviously you play there, but what are some of your other favorite courses in there? When you're when you put on your wide brim hat, I think you wear when you uh, yeah. when you play golf. Uh, my, where do you like to play? My dad was a doctor and a family doctor, so early on he told me about my, there my, you go. my skin cancer. Yeah. I've been wearing the big hat for a long time. In the air, it's you talk about choices. I mean, it's remarkable. I, you know, I love the Dormy Club. I love both Forest Creek courses. Pine mm-hmm. Needles from the traditional standpoint, number two for sure, but. Two, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's it's not my favorite, but I, it's up there. Don't get me wrong. It just, <laughs> I think it's so difficult sometimes. <laughs> right. It's just so hard to play. Yeah. But no, I mean, it's, it's wonderful golf course. Um, but the two Forest Creek courses, Pine Needles and um, uh, Dormy Club, I think are really neat courses. And, and Southern Pines course, Golf Club, what Kyle France did with that and taking out 800-some trees, exactly. I mean, that course is amazing. And, it's it's got to mature, and it's a little rough around the edges, but in a couple oh, of years it will be well. – it, I must play. It will be. And, you know, of course, I don't want to leave out CCNC. I love yeah. those courses in the Dogwood. They've done a great job out there with modernizing that place. And, of course, they had the U.S. Junior this past summer. We right. helped out with that, yeah. did the same thing we did for the Adaptive and the U.S. Women's and helped the um, club raise money, you know, because the amateur events, they've got to raise money for these amateur events. A lot of people don't know that a club might have to raise three or $400,000 yeah. to host a USGA amateur championship. Mm-hmm. So there's a big financial commitment from the club. So through our foundation, we're able to help Country Club of North Carolina raise money, you know, get the members, get a tax deduction. And we did at Berkeley Hall down at uh, Bluffton, South Carolina mm-hmm. for the U.S. Women's Mid-Am. A few years ago, they had the men's senior amateur up at Old Chatham. So great course. in addition to all the stuff in Moore County, you're going to see things pop up mm-hmm. around the Carolinas that are wonderful events and sites. So... I understood with their commitment here, they're not only going to have events in the Pinehurst area, they're going to have events all around North Carolina to boot. So. Yeah. So I, I'm a member of the North Carolina Golf Panel. Yes. Uh, so, you know, the top 100 comes out uh, in April. And so when you look at the wealth of golf that we have here, Pinehurst number one is number one in the state. Yeah. Pinehurst is number three. Dogwood at CCNC is number four. Uh, Pinehurst number four is number eight. Uh, you just go down the list and the top 50 courses you can play. This is in the state of North yes. Carolina. We have uh, eight of the top 11, uh, including Pinehurst number seven. So, you know, when people decide, you know, where to go and obviously with the industry we're in, uh, we want people to come and choose uh, the home American golf, the Pinehurst Southern Pines area over, you know, our competitors, Kiowa, Sea Island, Bandon, uh, mm-hmm. Pebble Beach. I mean, you know, how lucky are we yeah. To be in this area, to, to live in such a great place with so much golf history and such amazing golf courses that we're showing right here on the screen now. I, as you do, I run into people all around the country, and I, we have an annual meeting which people that do what I do get together, and we get a lot of people from Canada. And they'll, they'll come a week ahead of time and spend time in North Carolina when we have it here uh, just to play golf, and they remind me, you know how lucky y'all are down in, in Pinehurst in this area? With all the courses you got, I said, I ride by number two every day going to work. Right. And I yeah. have to pinch myself yeah. and remind myself, don't take this for granted. And I always joke, we all know that if it's December and it's snowing and you see a few foursomes out there, you know they may never be back. And they are going to play number two. Yeah, you know? for sure. So they want to take it. It's just like if you and I were Pebble or somewhere else. Mm-hmm. We are there. We're probably not coming back. And we, we got to play it. So it, it's just an unbelievable bastion of golf courses that we have not only in the carolinas but right here in moore county absolutely and in fact i was doing some research jack and and found a blog that you wrote in 2014 uh you were walking rules official for martin keimer keegan bradley and jason duffner uh, at the u.s open Uh, all three played very well despite the afternoon where things got really dried out keimer was leading by five on a side note, and this is the important part, I continue to hear from so many tourists, visitors, et cetera, who are so jealous of all of us who live in the Carolinas. Let's all Carolinians be thankful we live in such a great place. I think very well said. Well, thank you. And, and uh, it, it's just, it's it's hard to describe unless you live here. And I know this area is growing a lot, uh, and we're going to grow quite a bit by the time the, the dual U.S. opens in 2029. Right. Uh, this is going to be a different place, uh, but it's such a welcoming place. Uh if people have not come to North Carolina to, to play golf before, what would you tell them they need to do? They played all these other places, but haven't been here yet. Oh, I tell them to get the entire experience of whether you stay in the Carolina or Pine Needles, come down, enjoy the experience and, and hit a menu of golf courses 
and come play in the restaurants as well. I mean, yeah. it is a water. I mean, like we talked about the Hall of History and the Tufts Archives. There's a lot of things here you do as well in addition to playing golf. And uh, I think that speaks well for the community. There's so much to do. I mean, we're right here in the Bradshaw Art Center. Right. And uh, look at the great job they've done with the the creative arts and stuff here in Moore County. So there's a lot to do. Of course, we love golf and stay in it. And uh, But, you know, I'd say just enjoy the experience. Don't pop in for a day. Yeah. Do the whole deal and enjoy the experience. Last question I'll ask you before we wrap up. You mentioned menu. So as a local, uh, where would you recommend? What's your favorite maybe top three places to go have dinner? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, one of my sleepers that I forget about a lot is um, – table on the green mm. which is at midland golf club yeah and it's off the road mm -hmm. and the buildings you know not modern or pristine but that food in there and the service is fantastic so that that's one of my sleepers that i always tell people that may not have run across it and if you're not familiar with the location if you know where ironwood yep. is on midland it's right. almost right across the street the road goes down to the clubhouse there at uh, at that golf course yeah i'll do chapman's of course i love yeah. beef eaters as well and ironwood I think, and that's just a few of them, but there's a lot. You know, Pinehurst has a wonderful little village, but I tell people, don't forget going down to Southern Pines. Oh, yeah. It's got one of the most beautiful walks, of, and, and it longer, obviously, than the village, but it's got so many different restaurants and shops. Don't miss out on walking that street up and down and checking out all the hotels, the bars, things like that you That's got chef best. warren's yep. you've got um scott's table Vito's. uh walk down the other side you got southern prime you've got betsy's crepes uh for for breakfast and lunch in fact broad street bakery which just closed down which would made one of the best breakfast sandwiches <laughs> ever Did it? and the crispiest bacon i'd say crispy bacon it's the best and it's a thick bacon it was so good i, I can taste it right now but it's going to be replaced the whispering q uh, over at whispering woods yep. golf course they're going to put in a, a barbecue place there uh -huh. Uh, so uh, if you're you coming to the area and coming, you need to check that out. I don't know when it's going to open, but maybe after the women's open. Uh, but that'll be another cool place to go as well. Yeah, I don't know if there's any barbecue on Broad Street right now, is there? I don't think there is. Yeah, I mean, uh, specialty. So that would be a great addition. Of course, you think North Carolina, you think barbecue. So that's a wonderful yeah, addition. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very well, good. We could sit here and talk golf that's forever, good. Jack. And uh, certainly appreciate your time. Jack Nance, Executive Director of the Carolinas Golf Association. If you want to know more about the mission of the CGA, they do an awesome job. I I play in their events. They're fantastic. You have a wonderful staff, carolinasgolf.org. Uh, again, Jack, thanks so much for being in Paradise in the Pines. Thank you, Phil. And uh, I, I, I remember back at the Dunes Club when you ran into me at the Carolinas yeah. Amateur. <laughs> And uh, we met before that. You've always been very nice to me, well, and thank I, you. I do appreciate that. I well, appreciate that. And I think Mr. Harvey had won that uh, event at the Dunes, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, and Dennis Nichols still the head golf he, professional there. He sure great, is. great professional. Yeah. Uh, so thanks again, Jack. Appreciate it. So if you want to learn more, book your travel to the Home American Golf. Go to homeofgolf.com. If you want to check out this video or others, go to our YouTube channel, which is Home of American Golf. And for any podcast, uh, catch this on any of your favorite podcatchers. I usually go to Spotify, but any podcatcher you can check out this podcast and the rest of our shows in paradise in the pines this has been paradise in the pines thanks jack and we'll see you next time thank you phil